is she? Cooey! How dare she cooey me in public? Yoo-hoo! I'll give her you who. Who does she think she is? I shall ignore her, turn my back and look the other way. Cooey! Hush your noise. How embarrassing. Can you hear me calling? I was trying to attract your attention, Kenneth. Yes, me in the old department store. Such behaviour in Derry and Tom's is... What? ...exceedingly common. Common? I'm not common. Oh, that's debatable, Mother, isn't it? Wearing that old fur muffler. The jury's still out on that one. This muffler's in very good nick. During the Boer War, I'm sure. Oh, don't be like that. It's my birthday. I hate to be kept waiting, Louis. Selfish. We said we'd meet at three o'clock and now it's... Two minutes past, precisely. Two minutes is hardly late, Kenneth. If it's not late, what is it? What do you call it? A slight dawdle. Rubbish. I got waylaid looking at a new pair of silk with lacy frills. Very classy. Oh, blow your silk and lacy frills. I want my afternoon tea. Come on, lift. Sharpish. I'm positively tired. <laughs> Tittle Tattle by Martin Hesford. Step on the escalator, Alice. No, I can't, Charlie. Do as you're told, Mother. I'm frightened. I don't like escalators. I find them lethal. It's those silly high heels that are lethal. Teetering on six inches at 83. You're asking for trouble. I like my six inches. It makes me feel more ladylike. <laughs> Look more like a budgie on stilts. I, I heard that, you cheeky beggar. You're not too old to get a severe smack bottom, you know. Oh, threats now, is it? Yes, it needs me. I shall call a policeman. Oh, good. I shall smack his bottom too. You're incorrigible. Oh, no. Take hold of my arm, Mother, please. No, I am not standing on any escalator. Right. You'll have to sit on it then. Oh, give over in this corset. Who do you think I am, a contortionist? <laughs> I shall swing for her. I will really. Will this table suffice, sir? Uh, not too draughty, I hope. I'll close the window for you. Is that better, sir? Mm, not too stuffy, is it? Because Mother here, she suffers from the prickly heat, see? A martyr to it, she is. I am not. Yeah, she is. Always rubbing her whatnots with chamomile lotion. <laughs> Take a notice. My Kenny is being funny. Yes, Trey funny I am. A natural performer. Quite. I'll fetch the menu. Where's he gone? We need to order our tea. It's gone for the menu, Louis. Don't you listen. Oh, my hearing aid keeps going stupid. I'm like a goldfish trapped under water. A trout, more like. Sit yourself down. What did you say? I can't hear you, Kenny. Will you stop drawing attention to yourself? The eyes of the tea room are upon you. Such vexation. Step on the escalator, Mother. Do as you're told. No. I demand to use the lift. I've already told you, the lift is out of bounds. Why? Pressed up against the public during the sales, it will reek. Pute oh, hold a handkerchief up to your snout, then. I've enough of all this palaver. Step on the escalator now. No. Right. Oh, oh, don't shove me, Charlie. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh well, there we oh, are. Oh, up we go. Oh, it's quite easy when you get the hang of it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Where's my handbag? Dangling over your wrist. Oh, thank God for that. I thought I'd been pilfered. <sighs> oh, for crying out loud. Where's my thingy, Kenny? The volume control. Oh, which way do I twiddle it? Oh, come here. Let me do it. Be the same routine every time we venture out for a bit of stimulation. How's that? Is that better? Blooming thing. Oh, that's better, yes. I'm glad to hear it. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, hello. I'm looking for my friend. Has he arrived yet? Of course, sir. Follow me. Rightio. Come on, mother. Don't dilly dally. Spit spot. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> rush me, Charlie. I'm out of breath. Mm, nice waiter. Lovely hips, don't you think? <laughs> the waist of a small sailor. Well, what's it to be, Louis? Shall we go for the full tiffin tea or their homely selection of sandwiches, followed by a nice French fancy? Expensive air, isn't it? Oh, don't you worry about that. It's my birthday treat. Leave the purse strings to me. I'm rather flush at the moment, due to the teleplay. Oh, lovely. That's nice to hear. Blooming egg! Look who's coming. Oh. Charlie Autry and his mother. Mm. 
Oh. Charlie, what are you doing here? I might ask the same question. Hello, Alice. Hello, Louie. You'll be wanting two more chairs, sir, I presume. Two more chairs? Why? Your guests. Oh, I'm afraid you've made a faux pas, waiter. Yes, this is not the gentleman I'm having afternoon tea with. Are you keeping, Alice? Oh, chesty. <laughs> the gentleman I arranged to meet is a very different kettle of fish. A VIP. Get her. There's been a mix-up, waiter. Yeah, it certainly has. I'm here to celebrate Mother's birthday, and it's a private affair. Is it your birthday, Louis? Yes, I'm 63 today. Oh, congratulations. Many happy returns. Oh, thank you, dear. Did Kenneth buy you something nice? A hearing aid. How thoughtful. Isn't it? What's your guest's name, sir? Oh, I can't divulge that, waiter. It's all very hush-hush. My afternoon rendezvous is a secret. A secret? <laughs> yes, a secret. Well, I never am. Why that? Never you mind. Lovely shoes, Alice. Yes. Dulces. Pardon? I bought them for dancing the cha-cha. The cha-cha? Yeah, the cha-cha. Oh, one, two, cha cha Will this irritation <laughs> never cease? <laughs> It began gradually, this hard of hearing malarkey. We'd gone to the park, you see, feed the birds, and I'd just made a start on my bag of licorice. I like a bit of banish. What do you make of my hair, Louis? It's got a nice sheen to it, don't you think? Mm. Yes, like spun gold it is. I bought myself a new shampoo, volume intensity. I'm very impressed. That's the trick. No, thank you, dear. Pardon? I thought to myself, oi, oi. What are you mm. talking about? I don't want a bit. A bit? Of your Spanish. My Spanish? I didn't say anything about my Spanish. Yes, you did. I did not. I said my shampoo does the trick. No, thank you, dear. And that was that. The start of Louis' predicament. Her heart of hearing and my torture. Oh, blooming nuisance. There we are. Mission accomplished. Good. A ripe palaver. See? Alice. Oh. No need to stand on ceremony, is there? Would madam like a chair? Oh, no, no you. madam wouldn't. We'll wait for my guest um, over there uh, at reception. Well, you can. I'm not. My feet are killing me. A chair waiter, please. Of course, madam. <sighs> Who's Charlie seen, Alice? Keep your nose out. Mm, such mystery. Your chair, madam. Oh, love, how kind. Oh, Sir? Uh, oh. No, thank you. I shall oh. stand and wait. Take a seat, Charlie. Let your mother recover properly. Oh, I don't think so. My feet are swelling up like two exciting bullfrogs. Look, look, look. I'll look put them away. Right. Your mother, please. Oh, sit yourself down, Charlie. Yes, Charlie, let me recover in peace. I'm... <laughs> I'm chesty. Oh, no, well. <laughs> Perhaps I will sit oh. down. Just for a moment. Oh, I do feel a little light-headed with all the rampers. The gym, more like. I'll fetch another menu, oh. sir. <sighs> Mother and I shan't be sat here for long, Louis. Uh, as soon as my guest arrives, we'll be off. <laughs> Promptly. Good. Do I know him, this VIP guest of yours? You might. Oh, it's a he, then, is it? Oh, oh. My lips are sealed, honey. Yeah, it's like your wallet when it's your round. Always got to be intriguing, haven't you, Charlie? Always got to make yourself the centre of attention. Well, I can't help that, dear. You've either got it or you haven't. Got what? Star quality. Oh, really? Oh, lovely tea room, Alice, isn't it? Yeah, it's very posh and lardy, doll. How'd you get here, <laughs> darling? Did you come in a taxi? Oh, no. Charlie insisted we take the bus. Skin flint. Mother prefers it, don't you? A 38 bus ride. Do I? Yes, you do. She likes the Ring Road scenic route, you see. From Anslow? Of course. Now the tree blossoms out sitting upstairs, you'd think we're in the Pyrenees. Mm. Fancy. I've got an eye for beauty. Mm, so I've heard, down the dirty duck. Nobody's safe in trousers, especially the under-25s in bell-bottoms. But some lovely hats on show this afternoon, mm. isn't there, Alice? Yes, they're it. Very stylish. Look, look at her little fascinator. Very flirtatious, <laughs> that little feather. Perky, isn't it? <laughs> what time's he due, this mystery guest? Never you mind, I say. Oh, go on, tell me. What do you call him? What are you up to? Hush. Now, Charlie's having a business meeting about his career, Louis. His agent's arranged everything with a big knob. Alice. What? Would you please keep your trap shut? What did I warn you about before we came out? Oh, sorry. 
numbs the world. A big knob? Which big knob are you seeing? Mm. I'm saying nothing, Kenneth. Well, it can't be that important, can it? Bringing your mother to a business meeting. I'll be Bernard Delphont booking you into the Palladium, is it? Well, you can jest. Ah, Charlie takes me everywhere nowadays, don't you, darling? Yes. That's nice, isn't it, Karen? It's a case of having to. I can't leave Mother in the house for long, you see. I'm frightened of what I might come back to. How do you mean? Well, last week I did my commercial for the thermal undergarments, and when I returned home, I found a burnt geranium lying in the oven and a frozen pie sat on the windowsill. Well, that mishap had nothing to do with me. Really? Mm. Then whose fault was it? The cat? You leave Kitty out of this. She's an innocent party. Oh, mother's becoming very forgetful. It comes in fits and starts. Her memory's going, isn't it? Is it? Yes. Well, I haven't noticed. I don't remember. I rest my case. Life must be lived forwards but understood. Backwards. <sighs> Mother will die soon. Early next year. Of course, I don't know that yet. Her mind will slowly disappear. Seep away. She'll trip over in the hall, fall down, break one of her heels and snap. That will be that. I'll drink myself silly, of course. Year after year, I'll tour the provinces in tatty theatre shows, and the cast will hear me through the dressing room wall, talking to her, alone. Shall we open another bottle, Alice? Have one last drink for the road. Yes, Charlie, that will be lovely. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> hey ho. No, oh, it's a terrible thing, is old age, isn't it, when it starts to show. It's frightening, really. Louis's faculties are a bit in limbo at the moment. Consequently, I've had to buy the hearing aid. Mm. Are you going a bit mutton, Louis? No, I'm not. Oh, please, don't you dare lie, you fibber. I'm having to repeat myself constantly. I might as well talk to the walnut sideboard for all the good it does me. Be your legs next, won't it? Then the back, then the pea. Give Oh, what's he like? Incorrigible. <laughs> Kenny's only joking. I am not. I've already ordered a mop and three years' supply of disinfectant. Industrial strength. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your menu, sir, madam? Oh. oh, now that won't be necessary, waiter. We're not ordering anything yet. Not until Thank my... Thank you, dear. Well, you took your time, didn't you? Thought you'd gone to empty every ashtray in the place. Oh, don't start, Kenny. Don't start. It's like waiting for a British Rail train round here. Mother and I will have two tiffin teas, if you please. Very good, sir. Has there been any word from my guest yet, waiter? I'm afraid not, sir. Oh. It'll be the traffic, I expect. Yes, he's having trouble parking his gold-plated roller. Oh, shut your cake, oh, you. I'll let you know as soon as he arrives, Mr Hawtrey. Oh, <laughs> I see. You know my name, do you? <laughs> Recognises the famous face. <laughs> of course. Saturday nights at the pictures. You and Mr Williams make me laugh a lot. How lovely for you. Oh, I'm very, um... Flattered. <laughs> Don't start. Don't start what? You know what. I do not. Are you, are you married, dear? Be quiet. Don't start, I said. Ignore my friend. He gets very jealous of my having any attention. Are you half Italian, dear? No, sir. I'm not. Behave. Mm, with those dark eyelashes and broad shoulders, you certainly should be like a mm, gondolier you are. <laughs> I'm half Irish. Oh, I say. Play the fiddle, do you? I like a nice Irish fiddle, don't I, Alice? Oh, yes. <laughs> Especially after a Guinness or two. <laughs> <laughs> All this smutty, suggestive talk is outrageous. Well, you should know, dear. You've made a career out of it. At least my career is still on the rise. And what do you mean by that? I'm not the one taking someone out for tea, am I? Touting for work. How dare you? Touting? I'm not touting for your information, Kenneth. If you must know, I'm here to um, negotiate. Negotiate? <laughs> negotiate what? Nothing. A big film deal. Alice, what? shut up. Get away. What big film have you been offered? Mm, wouldn't you like to know? Would I? Yes, you would. It's written all over your mush. Goggle-eyed you are. Your face says it all. Hmm? Red as a beetroot. A beetroot? If my face is a little rude, Charlie is blushing at your flaming cheek, your lies. Oh, keep your knickers on, dear. Now then, now then, no bickering, boys. No more argy-bargy. This is my birthday treat, remember? Well, he started it, Louis. Yes, and I'm finishing it. What are you having, Alice? Um, Will you join us for the tiffin? 
Yeah. What's a tiffin? A tiffin tea is from India. It's what they served up during the Raj. Sandwiches, scones, cakes and crumpets. The full Monty is very select. Is it spicy? No, of course not. Cook. I don't want any more curried eggs, do I, Charlie? No, she doesn't. They bang her up something rotten. You know, last time she had a takeaway, oh, we had to call out the plumber. Oh, well. With his plunger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can both give over. <laughs> like naughty schoolboys they are. Oh, oh shut your bum, old you. Oh, <laughs> What's it to be, Alice? Will you try the tiffin? Oh, go on, I'll give it a whirl. I like to be adventurous. So we go. Yes, you want to see her new play takes bra? Oh. <laughs> Behave, I said. <laughs> what about you, Charlie? Do you want one? A bra? Oh, no, dear. I'm not that way inclined. Have you heard? I never go near them. The titties! <laughs> 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 Will you join us? No, thank you. I'm afraid we must wait for my guest. Alice is his protocol. But I'm wilting. If I wait any longer, I'll faint. No, you won't. You've had two kippers for breakfast. Oh, oh, oh. oh is she having a turn? Oh, yeah, I'm a hot oh, She's play-acting. Oh, I'm not acting anything. I'm... Oh, oh, she's having a do, hot flush, isn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, your mother oh, can't yes. wait any longer, Charlie. Oh. She's family. Oh, oh. oh God, oh. they're both off. Four oh. tiffins, is it, sir? Oh, hello, waiter. I forgot you were there, handsome. Four tiffin teas? Yes. No. Oh, oh. oh very well. You oh. win, Alice. Uh, we'll order our teas and move when my oh. guest appears. If he appears. Oh, he'll appear, Kenneth. Don't you worry. Four tiffins on their way. Good. Well, isn't this wonderful? Oh, I feel very happy today, don't you, Kenny? An afternoon tea with friends. Mm -hmm. Quite a little tea party. Isn't it? Louis and myself often watch television together, especially when I'm appearing on it. We meet up in the evening, share a meal from Marks and Spencer's, trays on our knees. <sighs> What's this on my plate? Cheesy haddock. Pardon? Cheesy haddock. Where's my peas? <sighs> They're rolling on your lap. It's rather distressing to see her failing. All good things must come to an end, I suppose. Hmm. Still... At the end, I'll be the first to go. I shall take the pills, you see, fall fast asleep and drift off into the dead of night. Oblivion. Louis will find me gone in the morning. Do you want a cup of tea, Kenny? 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 Oh! Funny how life will turn out. Deathly. Ooh, matron. Mm, these cucumber and salmon sandwiches are delicious, don't you think? Mm, very refreshing on the palate. Mm. I prefer the Stilton and Grey. Oh, let's have a nibble and one over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, oh, yeah, very tangy is that. Yeah, sandwiches coming out of our ear holes, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Mm, very sublime. Mm, delectable. What about the tuna and mayonnaise? Do you like their mayonnaise? Well, they're a bit on the small side for my liking, Louie. Dainty. What do you expect, Alice? Docker's wedge. Well, I like to get my dentures into something a bit more substantial, usually. No, oh, don't play with it. You've got butter all over your fingers and chin. Oh. Oh. Wipe your whiskers out. Oh. Nice serviettes, these, Kenny. Napkins, Egyptian linen. Yeah, they look lovely on our dining room table, Charlie. Oh, don't you dare. I've got my eyes on you, Alice. What? I'm oh. watching you. Watching? Mm. Mother has a tendency to whip things into her handbag. Oh, her handbag? The doctor says I must be very vigilant. She has a habit of picking up desirable objects and snap goes the clasp of her handbag. Light fingered? Mm, it's all part of her oncoming medical condition, her fuzziness of the mind. I'm shocked. And so was the vicar, after he copped her pinching his floral tributes. Never. Yes. She'd been doing his florals for years, won prizes for her heavenly scented lilies, and now he won't let her near his highly polished altar. She's been replaced by a boy scout with green fingers. 
damn cheek. Yeah, isn't it? Where's well, the compassion, I say? Yeah, because it can be like that, hard-faced. Mm, love you and leave you. Yeah, one day you're in and then you're out. Yeah, it's just like working in show business. Quite. This salt cellar is silver filigree, I think. Mm, don't you dare, I'm watching you, Alice. Oh. And your handbag. Yeah. You're very really quiet, Louis. Oh, go! Cool. not again. It's like sitting next to a blowing kettle. Pardon? Shush, you're whistling. Is everything to your satisfaction, ladies and gentlemen? Mm, everything is rather mm. super duper, waiter. Yeah, it's lovely sarnies, top nod. I'm pleased to hear it. Mm, no sign of his guest yet. No, I'm afraid not. Oh, he's very late, isn't he, Charlie? He'll be here. You see, waiter, my guest needs my services. He's very desperate to get me into his next picture. A Hollywood film, is it, Mr Hawtrey? Well, you never know. If Terry Thomas can do it, why can't I? I'm impressed. Yes, you should be. My star is rising. <laughs> Don't believe a word of it. Who's going to offer her a Hollywood movie? Shut it. Mm, lovely cheese and chutney, waiter. Fruity. I'll tell the chef. <laughs> oh, you do that. <laughs> oh, what a nice boy. Attractive uh, personality. Not mm -hmm. as attractive as you, dear. Oh, Don't you think my Charlie looks attractive today, Louis, for his meeting? Oh, yes. His hair looks very mm -hmm. becoming. Mm -hmm. A new style, isn't it? Beatnik. Silence. I went to a new establishment in Mayfair, Louis. <laughs> Mr. Madeline. It was all very hush hush. They manufacture for all the major movie stars. Manufacture? Top secret toupees. Yes. 007, James Bond, to name but one. James Bond? Well, I never. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased with the desired effect. Wearing this um, new hairpiece, I feel very virile indeed. <laughs> well, if it's good enough for James Bond. Well, quite. Oh, oh, seven. Oh, yes, your masculinity is much improved today. Positively screaming at me, it is. It's marvellous what they can do nowadays with a few man-made fibres, isn't it? It looks quite natural, but in fact it's quite artificial. A philosophy many people aspire to on Carnaby Street. Have you ever thought of wearing one, Connie? Pardon? A wig? I think a wig would suit you if I was your giving a whirl. I have no intention of giving anything synthetic a whirl, thank you very much. Don't knock it till you tried it, dear. A toupee opens many doors in the film business, brings in a whole selection of different roles to play. An actor must have his hair if he's to stay popular with the public. How would you know? Well, they've done the research in Revalley magazine. Mm, yeah. According to a poll, 98% of women prefer their male film stars to have hair. Mm. On the head and everywhere. Well, well, I've got my own hair, thank you. I don't need a rag on me head. Well, that's not what Patsy says in makeup. Um, she says they're always having to powder it. I beg your pardon. Your thinning spot. My what? Back of your head. I haven't got a thinning spot. Turn round, let's have a look. <laughs> Get your hands off, Louis. Patsy said it was a major problem, a professional hazard. What is? Camera flare. On your bald spot. How oh, dare she? How oh, dare a chit of a makeup woman cast such aspersions? It's a lie. I'm sure she didn't mean anything by it. I'll have a sacked. She'll never work at Pinewood again, the malicious bitch. Shh. Oh, it was just Patsy's professional opinion. Her professional opinion? Wait until I see the little cow. I'll clean her. You've upset him now, oh. Charlie. I'm not upset, Alice. I'm livid. Oh. Livid, I am. Shh. Oh, shut up yourself. Shut your fat cake hole. Oh. oh, shut your rat hole, you. I won't have it, you hear? Public's interference. Who do you think you are? Drink your tea and shut your face. Keep your provincial nose out. Plebeian. Well, if that's your attitude, I'm just glad I might not be there to see it. See what? Your confrontation with Patsy. <laughs> oh, you'll see it all right. On the set of the next Carry On, that first day of filming, there'll be murder, you'll see. Might not. I haven't signed my contract yet. Not signed? We start filming in a few weeks. I'm quite aware of that. Why haven't you signed? Haven't you read the script? Utter piffle. Diabolical rubbish. Yeah, same old putrid drivel. I agree with you there. And I notice you've been given the bigger part again. Been counting your lines, have you? Yes, he has. Oh, I'm fed up with making do. Getting laughs out of cheap, inferior material. I deserve better. My agent has told our producer, Peter Rogers, I'm not satisfied. Uh, we're still haggling over my contract. I've demanded a chauffeured car, 
start billing more mm-hmm. money and a complete rewrite of my part. <laughs> don't want much, do you, then? Peter Rogers can take it or leave it. I don't care. Brave words, Ducky. Cheese and pickle, Alice. Oh, yes, please, Louis. You want to be very careful with all this haggling. <laughs> Look what happened last time. They didn't use you, did they? Recast the part. Told you to op it. Peter says no actor is bigger than the carry-on name. Sometimes you have to make a stand, Kenneth. Yeah, know your worth, after all. I've been at it a lot longer than you have. Professional mm. experience is everything. Yeah, my Charlie started acting at the age of seven, Louis. He's Peter's Jews. Appeared in a silent film, he did. We don't mention my silent era, do we, Alice? Oh. Starred in the classical theatre, too, took over Noel Coward's parts in Peter Pan, the West End. Mm, a lost boy. Yeah, child prodigy, boss. Flying through the air to Never Never Land. <laughs> oh, with Tinkerbell. Oh, yeah. Tinker, tinkle, oh. tinkle, tinkle. Oh, Mark Kelly was oh, in Joan of Arc. Yes, George Bernard Shaw. That was properly classical, that was. Were you? Mark Kenny spoke his lines beautiful, like Sir Lawrence Olivier. Mm, thank you, Mother. The critic said he was destined for great things. A serious player. It was still a camp role, though, wasn't it? You played it in tight Dublin hose. There were some laughs to be gained playing the Dauphin of France, yes, but you had to know how to act the part properly. It was a very complex character, you see. I'm sure. You couldn't just come on stage and say, Oh, hello, what a big one. Let me tickle your navel with a feather, missus. Mm. No, no, no. You had to play the part truthfully, intellectually. Mark Kenny got to work with Orson Welles. Now Charlie got to work with Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, the great. Well, yes, back then we both got to act serious characters in prestigious productions. One was required to act properly and not merely oh. perform. Like a pair of pantaloons. Quite. Oh, glorious days. <sighs> Halcyon days. Funny, isn't it? The quality I once possessed. The very thing that made me stand out from the crowd. My My uniqueness. uniqueness Is the very thing that people laugh at now. I've become a sort of peculiarity. Destined never to fit in. And so I play up to it. Hide behind it. Create a clownish camp persona. And suddenly... I'm trapped within. A prisoner. And nobody will take me seriously anymore. Oh, I say. Oh, matron. My whole world has become... Surreally. Eccentrically. Funny funny ha-ha. Alice and Louis have been a long time in that lavatory, haven't they? What are they doing in there? Oh, don't ask me. A lady's ablutions are an enigma to me. The suspenders and stockings are mystery. Mm. Lovely whipped cream. Cornish. Yes. Why the pensive face, Kenneth? I haven't got a pensive face, Charlie. You have. No, oh, actually, I was just thinking about something. Oh. Do you think, Charlie, one ever fulfills one's expectations? How do you mean, Kenneth? In life, does one ever fulfil one's promise? Well, that depends, doesn't it, on what your expectations are. Oh, nowadays, a little bit of professional respect would be nice. Oh, yes, I agree with you there. One doesn't want to play the fool permanently. Quite. Mm, Still, you're doing well for yourself at the moment, aren't you? You play on the telly, I believe. Well, I mustn't grumble, but... Still a fado farce, whipping me trousers off, running around with a daffodil. Mm, very artistic. One tries, I'm sure. And what about you? Have you been working on anything nice recently? I've already told you, Kenneth. I'm being very choosy at the moment. I won't accept any old rubbish. And what'll you do if this film career of yours doesn't materialise? The work could dry up, you know, being choosy, and then where will you be? I'm not like you. I refuse to judge my whole worth on if I'm working or not. I have life outside the profession. I have my friends. Well, so have I. My appointment diary is brimming. No, I'm not talking about your theatrical opening night soirees. I'm talking about oh, real those friends. those kind of friends. Yes. The ones you pay for. I do not pay for anyone. How dare you? Well, 
Not all the time. Sometimes my famous face is enough. How romantic. Oh, I met a lovely one last week. Eighteen. As fresh as paint. Disgraceful. A trainee commie chef he was. At the Golden Egg in Kilburn. Oh, he's going places then. Oh, yes. He was very good at it. Oh, what? Making... A Welsh rabbit. Mm -hmm. You get hungry after a bit of a moor, I find. <laughs> you and Gina Lollabridge, you do. Mm -hmm. You can laugh. I bet he did. Yes. Very ticklish he was. Around the midriff. Oh, <laughs> tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> you took this lad back to your place then, did you? Yes. We did the business downstairs in the parlour. We had a roll around on the carpet. Oh, the carpet. <laughs> what about the fluff? Oh, I always hoover beforehand. Prepare myself. Very charged it was too, the hanky panky. Covered ourselves up afterwards with the sheep rug. <laughs> Felt very wicked. <laughs> the sheep fur against the nylon socks. <laughs> Ooh, static electricity. <laughs> very primal. Oh, the things you come out with, Charlie Hawtrey. I've never heard the like. Well, I'm a one off, dear, aren't I? Just like you. That's true. One offs we are, me and you. I could never indulge myself like you. Nothing mucky. I'm never physical. I prefer the cerebral. I won't indulge in anything messy. All this permissiveness isn't healthy. There's no love involved. Well, I find my friendly chums very loving. They always come back for more. What do you expect if you're paying them a tenner a time? That's not love you're experiencing, Charlie. It's a monetary transaction. I should, Coco. Go. Oh, here they come. Yeah, Bootsy and Snudge. <laughs> Lovely toilets, Kenny. Clean as a nun's wimple. Well, I hope you washed your hands, Louis. Hygiene. Of course I did. Um, what have you been up to, Alice? You took your time. Yes, you've nearly missed out on those cakes and skirts. Oh. Get stuck oh, in. Oh, yummy! What, what's that hanging from your handbag, Alice? Where? There. Oh, dear. I thought we'd what are you doing with that toilet paper dangling? Nothing. She kept on stuffing it, I'm afraid. Stuffing it? The Bronco toilet rolls into her handbag. She was insistent. A handbag? Oh, I tried to stop her. I thought we got rid of most of it, flashed it away. Give me that handbag, Alice. No. Tear off that toilet paper. No. Hand over your handbag, Alice. I won't have it such lewd behaviour, do you? What's it to you, big mouth? Oh, charming. There, it's done. No more toilet paper dangling. No more embarrassment. Stick it in your pocket, Kenneth, the evidence. I'll do no such thing. What do you think I am? Wigan lavatory attendant? I can't take you anywhere, Alice. You can? Stealing Bronco toilet paper from Derry and Tom's. Where will it all end? I'm ashamed of you, Alice. Ashamed. Sorry, Charlie. What will people think? I don't know, Charlie. I don't know what anybody's talking about. Can't remember. Of course she can't remember. Life will never be the same again. Everything's changing. Life's on the slide. Charlie! Charlie, where are you? I'm here, Mother. Oh. Next door. Through the bedroom wall. Don't leave me, will you? Oh. We belong together, don't we? Like a pair of shoes. <sighs> <laughs> Always me and Charlie, mm. isn't it? We board around our world together, don't we? From Hounslow to Pinewood. <laughs> like a pair of dancing shoes. Mm. I drink to nullify the pain. I drink to make life feel sane. Alone in the dark. Who cares anymore? Is anybody laughing? I'm your biggest fan, Charlie. Biggest fan in the world. I love you. How do? I'm Gloria, and this is Teddy. I hope you don't mind us interrupting your tea cakes. We go and see every carry on film you do, don't oh. we, Teddy? Oh, we do, Gloria. We're great big fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> More tea, Mother? Uh, no, thank you, dear. Look at him, Gloria, no stuck up in the air. Yeah, <laughs> snooty, just like in the carry-on films. Oh, fancy seeing both of you in here together. All right, comical pair, aren't they? Dead funny. <laughs> Do you live in London? My personal habitat is my own affair, thank you. Right. 
We're here for the weekend, lads. Nothing dirty, mind. Oh, I don't know about that, Gloria. <laughs> Cheeky. It's our wedding anniversary. 25 years. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. We've seen Buckingham Palace, Trafalgar Square, Big Ben, and now... We've seen you too. <laughs> Can we have both your autographs? Have you got a biro, Gloria? Hiding somewhere. Well, they're never there when you want one, are they? It's the same at the bingo. Uh, have you got a bit of paper, Gloria? No, I've not, Teddy. What's that on the floor? Toilet paper. Toilet what? Oh, don't ask. Mm. Here we are, Teddy. A paper anchor. That'll do. And a by roll. Yeah, good. Right. Sign away, lads, if you please. Autographs. I have no intention of signing anything. Hey. You heard. But it's chocolate eclair is scrumptious, mm. isn't it, Alice? Yes, it is. Would you force yourself onto Michael Redgrave? Pardon? Would you force yourself onto Paul Schofield? Uh, Would you invade their privacy? Will they both then carry on regardless? No, I thought not. I don't understand you, lads. I, 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 I don't get your drift. Mr Redgrave and Mr Schofield are both great actors. Theatrical artists that command respect. And so likewise, commanding respect ourselves, we're not signing anything. Op it. Good afternoon. Shift it. Was it something we both said? Because we only wanted to say. But we like you. <laughs> yeah, people will be laughing at you two when you're dead and gone, won't they? In those films. Oh, you're very much loved. Oh, really? Oh, come on, Gloria, move it back to our table. Sharpish. Sorry. A blooming cheek of it. Interfering nobody's. How dare they? Oh, how could you? They only wanted your water glass. I'm quite aware of the public's importance, Louis, in making an actor successful, but there's a time and a place for everything. Yeah, and eating a banana cake isn't it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I've come out for tea with you, Louis. This is a private birthday celebration. Yes, and I'm here for a private business meeting. That's if he ever turns up. Peter Rogers will turn up, don't you worry. <gasps> Peter? Excuse me. Mr Hawtrey, your guest, Peter Rogers, is on the telephone. Oh, Peter Lord. Rogers? What, what does Peter want with you? I've already told you, Kenneth. I'm to discuss my next picture. Your next picture? Mm. Do you mean the next carry-on? Is Peter your mystery guest? You can take the phone call at reception, sir. Mr Rogers says it's urgent. Oh, thank you. Well, I never, Peter <laughs> Rogers, so that's it. Oh, you're out in your ear, I bet, with all that haggling over your contract. I doubt that very much. Peter knows where his bread is buttered. He knows my work. Good luck, Charlie. Mm, where talent mm. is concerned, Mother, luck doesn't come into it. Oh, quite. I see. And the car, Peter? What about, what about the chauffeured car? And my star billing? And the rewrite. I want my part made bigger. And the pay? How much are we talking? Well, how did it go? What did he say? What did he say? Uh, Peter, I'm talking about Peter Rogers. What did Peter say? Any more tea in the pot, Alice? Oh, um, yes. Mm, give us a tinkle, love. Mm -hmm. I told you, didn't I? All this haggling. What did I tell you? Out in his ear. Peter sends you his love, Alice. Oh. He was delayed in a script meeting. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Has Peter consented? Oh. If you got what you wanted, the chauffeured car, the rewrite, the star billing, your pay rise. Pass the sugar, mother. Oh. Mm, see, I told you, Charlie's got now. Out in his ear, like I said. I'm never wrong. Like a soothsayer, I am a clairvoyant. I got everything, Kenneth. <gasps> Pardon? Oh, Charlie, that's just everything. wonderful. Yes, of course, oh. more or less. What? You heard me, Kenneth. Well, I'm flabbergasted, flabbergasted, I am. Calm yourself, Kenneth. You'll burst something. <laughs> Peter was very understanding. He said he understood my predicament completely. He said if I was to sign my contract for the next carry-on, the car, the part, the star billing, the pay rise, well, everything would be taken very seriously the next time round. <gasps> the next time round? What are you talking about? I'm to negotiate everything I want on the next picture. There was one after this. The one after this? So you got nothing. No car, no star billing, no... Peter knows my worth. He said you and the team desperately need me and I mustn't let anyone down. But you come out 
donkey with that came mm. you? Quite. Oh. Well, I've heard everything. All this fuss and intrigue and he gets nothing. He gets nothing he wanted in his contract and he's still doing the blooming film. I'm very pleased. Uh, Peter says it's not uh, how many lines I speak, it's how my presence is felt on the screen. <laughs> I'm, I'm very moved. I, I'm a star. <laughs> <clears throat> well, have we all finished? Uh, good, because I couldn't digest another thing. I I'm full to the brim. Um, what a perfect day. <sighs> hey ho. Uh, waiter. Mr. Hawtrey. Uh, could we have the bill, please? Uh, yes, and don't forget to split it. Mr. Hawtrey isn't going to Hollywood, it would seem, so every penny counts. I'll pay my half and the tip. That won't be necessary. Everything's been taken care of. Mr. Bakewell and his wife. Mr. Mm -hmm. Bakewell? The northern couple from table seven. They said they were sorry for interrupting your afternoon tea and as a way of apology insisted they pay your bill. Oh, pay our bill? Oh, yes. They oh. also said oh. thank you for the pleasure. Oh. The pleasure? The pleasure of laughter throughout the years. What? How dare they? Who do they think they are? It's outrageous, isn't it? Paying our bill. Oh, it's a nice gesture. Yes, it is. It's nice to feel really appreciated. I'll bring your coats. Wow. You see? This is what comes of appearing in those dreadful carry-on films, Charlie. Loathsome, isn't it? Our lives are not our own. Trapped by our own success. People treat us like we're objects. Paying our bill, indeed, without asking. That bloomy cheek. Oh, are you ready, Alice? I've heard them. Yes, dear, I'm coming. Mm. Have you got your hand back? Um, yeah, yeah uh, somewhere. Uh, I suppose it'll give them some kind of pleasure. Yes, it's something to crow about back home. <laughs> oh, Afternoon tea with Kenny and Charlie. Charlie and Kenny. Here are your coats. Oh, we oh. must do it again sometime. Oh, I'd Alice. like that very much, Louis. Oh, hurry up, will you? Oh, Listen Alice. to them both. Oh, yeah, they never start, do they? they? <laughs> Can't get a word in edgeways. So Such tittle-tattle. Yeah. Tittle-tattle makes their world go round. Oh, oh be quiet, you. will you? The turmoil is never-ending, never-ending. Oh, we sharing a taxi, Kenny? If we can call one above your noise. Oh, come on, get a move on, Alice. We'll miss the next bus. Yes. The scenic route to Hounslow. <laughs> Don't knock it till you tried it, dear. Well, Charlie boy, it's been nice seeing you again. Hasn't it? And always remember, the war isn't over yet. War? What war, dear? The war with them, the Peter Rogers of this world. Mm. There'll always be another battle to win, won't there? Another picture to fight for. True appreciation, I mean. Oh, respect for our talent. Yes, of course. And we'll overcome in the end. They can't carry on without you and me. No, they can't. Peter Rogers didn't create our uniqueness, did he? No, he didn't. That's true. Me and Louis did. <laughs> How very true. Perfectly true. <laughs> Ta-ra, Charlie. Ta-ra, Kenny. Ta-ra, Alice. Ta-ra, Louis. Bon voyage. Up your bum. <laughs> and may your bum be plenty. Oh, <laughs> oh are they like our boys. Oh, they're incorrigible. Thank God. <laughs> Nobody like them. Our sons. Sons. <laughs> oh, I say. No, Major. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 Tattle, Kenneth Williams was played by Adam Godley, Charles Hawtrey by David Charles, Louis by Janine Dovitsky, Alice by Marcia Warren, The Waiter by Eddie Capley, Gloria by Lisa Allen, and Teddy by Hamilton Burstock. Tittle Tattle was written by Martin Hesford and produced in Salford by Gary Brown. Oh, I played Salford once, you know. Will you put a cork in it? Oh.